In this second podcast, we're going to do two example problems, uh, both from the stoichiometry review sheets. So this is example number two from the stoichiometry review sheet. And that problem says, how many grams of butane C4H10 must be burned in an excess of O2 to produce 15 grams of CO2? Here's the chemical reaction. So we are um, producing carbon dioxide, and we are looking for butane. So carbon dioxide is here, and we're looking for butane over here. And since we have 15 grams of carbon dioxide, so let's go back to our our problem. So again, uh, no matter what mathematical problem you're doing, you always start at the same point. You write down your given. So I have 15.0 grams of carbon dioxide. When in doubt, convert to moles, or when in doubt, mole it out, as a friend says. So of course, I'm going to turn it into moles, so one mole will go on the top. And I got to look up the weight of, from the periodic table of carbon dioxide. And so that I can quick do some math, I know that carbon, di uh, carbon is 12.01 grams plus two oxygens. And of course, oxygen weighs 16. So that's 44.01. Now, because I'm comparing carbon dioxide to butane, I'm g and I'm currently in carbon dioxide, I'm going to put the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation for carbon dioxide on the bottom, and the coefficient for butane on the top. So now I've converted from moles of carbon dioxide into moles of butane by using the mole ratio. Question for asked for how many grams of butane would be produced. So now that I'm in moles, I can very easily put the one mole on the bottom and the weight of butane on the top. So I'm going to take the weight of four carbons plus the weight of ten hydrogens, and it's 58.14. Equals. Got to go back to my handy dandy calculator. So of course, we multiply everything on the top, we divide by everything on the bottom. So I hit parentheses, 15 times 2 times my previous answer, which happened to be 58.14, which is the mass of the butane, divided by 44.01 times 8. Close my parentheses hit enter. My answer is 4.95. That w There was three significant f figures in the problem, so I'm going to round right to that digit there. So my answer will just be 4.95 grams of C4H10, which is butane. And of course, butane, we know, is in cigarette lighters. So if you go when you go to Quick Check or 7-Eleven or wherever you go, and they're right there by the register, they've got the little lighters inside butane. Okay, highly, highly, highly flammable gas. Okay, so my answer is 4.95 grams. Easy. Looks the same as the previous example problem we did in podcast number one. Now, let's try a different example. And I'll show you that it doesn't matter what two things you convert between, you're going to get the same answer either way. I'm sorry, the method is the exact same. So here we have example number three. So let me pull up example number three for you in case you don't have the sheet in front of you. So we're looking at number three here. Um, now you'll start to notice that a lot more of these problems become word problems. Now there's a lot of excess information. It's no longer just balance. Uh, now we actually have to do stuff and read stuff. Now a lot of it is extraneous information. So for example, over the years the thermite reaction has been used for welding, railroad rails, and incendiary bombs, and to ignite solid fuel rocket motors. Great. So happy I know that, but it hasn't helped me solve the problem yet. The reaction is blah, 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 blah. What masses of iron 3 oxide, which is this substance, and aluminum here, must be used to produce 15 grams of iron? Okay, what is the maximum mass of aluminum oxide that could be produced? Aluminum oxide. So there's actually three stoichiometry problems in this. They've given us only one given. So that means we're going to use that same given in each one of those reactions. So we're going in the first one, we're going to find iron 3 oxide. In the second one, we're going to find aluminum. And the third one, we're going to find aluminum oxide. Okay, so we're going to do three different stoichiometry problems all in one big step. I'm sorry, all in one big problem. So let's start with what we know. We know that we had 15 grams of iron, plain old iron. So we're going to do the iron 3 oxide first. When in doubt, 
mole it out. So one mole. And the weight from the periodic table for iron is 55.85 grams. Then we are in iron, so we put the coefficient for the iron, and we want to convert to iron 3 oxide. And of course, we know that 1s are implied in chemistry, so there's a 1 as the coefficient in front of the iron 3 oxide. And the question asks for grams, so 1 mole goes on the bottom, and of course, I have to convert to grams on the top. This one I'm going to need my calculator for. Clear out what I had there before. So I've got. 2 times 55.85 plus 3 times 16, which I happen to know is 48, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. It's 159.7. Multiply everything on the top. Divide by everything on the bottom. So I'm going to go times 15 divided by parentheses. 55.85 times 2 equals 21.4 grams of iron 3 oxide. So, that was stoichiometry 1. Again, notice the process hasn't changed. The exact same things are popping up. A given, a conversion to moles, a mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation, and a conversion back to grams. Simple. Repeat you know, lather, rinse, repeat. Here we go. So the next one it wants us to find is aluminum. Now, I could do this one of two ways. I can start with the 21.4 grams of iron 3 oxide because it really doesn't matter which two substances you can pair in the chemical reaction. So I can go from iron 3 oxide to aluminum. I can go from iron to iron 3 oxide. I can go any, I can go from left to right, right to left, left to left, right to right. Doesn't matter, okay? Because the process is the same every time. But there's only one number in this problem that is absolute and that is the 15 grams of iron that was in the given in the problem. Therefore, I'm going to stick to using that over and over again. Try to stay away from using calculated numbers if you can. I calculated this mass of iron 3 oxide. Therefore, I don't want to use it over and over again because it may be wrong. And if I'm using a wrong number, that is going to screw up all the rest of the calculations. So again, the beginning is going to look the same, 55. 0.85 grams to one mole. I'm in iron, so I put a two iron, and now I'm going to aluminum, and there's two aluminums. Now, yes, you could convert, reduce this down to one to one, but I don't recommend it because if you're going to go look at this problem later to study from, you're not going to know where the ones came from because you're going to look at the chemical reaction and go, wait a second, there were twos. Well, obviously there were twos that you converted, so I would try and stay away from reducing down the numbers. It's not going to change the problem, so just keep it the way it is. And then, of course, we've got to convert into grams of aluminum. So one mole goes on the bottom, and 26.98 goes on the top. Pull out my handy-dandy calculator. Clear out everything that was there. And I'm going to go 15 times 2 times 26.98. Ooh, that's not right. Let's fix that. Move over, there we go. Okay, and I'm going to divide that by 55, let's try to hit fives this time, 55.85 times 2. My calculator doesn't like me, it's not so handy dandy today. Enter, and I get 7.25, we'll round it, because again, we're rounding to three sig figs, because that's the number of sig figs that are in the problem. Okay, and last but not least, they asked us to find the alum aluminum oxide. So, again, 15.0 grams of iron. One mole goes on the top. 55.85 grams goes on the bottom. I'm in iron, so I put two Fe's on the bottom. I'm going to aluminum, so therefore I need one Al2O3. One mole goes on the bottom, and then the weight from the periodic table of aluminum goes on the top. I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so I'm going to calculate it. 26.98 times 2 plus, again, I know that 3 oxygens is 48, so that's 101.96.
Now I'm going to multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, times 15. That's my top. Divide by 55.85 times 2, enter, 13.7. And there are two more example problems that you're going to do. I'm going to make another podcast again with more example problems just in case you still need more helping uh, review stoichiometry problems.